Oh, hello there. Please excuse me, I was just finishing my peer-reviewed peer article of the day. This one was a doozy dealing with the economic deficiencies of South African trade. <laughs> anyway, please excuse the interruption of your regularly programmed Red Green for a five to ten minute instructional video. My name is Dr. Simon Woodstock Giles, and I will be your host for this evening. We will have special guests along the way, so do sit tight. This evening, we will be discussing the Bushido Code. Growing and learning and learning in piles with Dr. Simon Woodstock Giles. Now you might be asking, Dr. Woodstock Giles, what exactly does Bushido mean? Well, let's get to the root of the word. Before Japanese fighting men were known as samurai, they were called bushi, meaning simply warrior. By adding the Japanese word do, which means the way, Bushido literally translates as the way of the warrior. It refers to a set of principles by which samurai warriors guided their lives. Oh, you can, you can stop filming, mate. Now, it's a common misconception amongst uneducated people that Bushido code existed for centuries on end. This simply isn't true. The truth is, the Bushido code existed for centuries and centuries as a suggested guideline to living. This was specified upon by specific lords to specific samurai. The Bushido Code wasn't even written about until the late 17th century, after civil wars had ended in the country of Japan. Now, the Bushido Code was heavily idealized, you must understand this. Not every samurai followed it specifically. It was much akin to the Code of Chivalry during the medieval ages. But I'm boring you, I'm sure. So without further ado, how about we bring out your special guest host for this evening? Ladies and gentlemen, TV's Tom Selleck. Oh, hello, Mr. Selleck. Hello. Program. Thank you. What's your name again? It's Dr. Simon Woodstock. Oh, it's great. I'm TV's Tom Selleck. And like Lamy here said, I'm here to teach you the Bushido Code. After all, I am the resident expert on these topic. You can check out the entire work and my 25-piece DVD set. TV's Tom Selleck's Guide to Bushido or something. Tom Selleck Bushido Code. Let's start with something basic, shall we? This one is called the Squat and Point. The number and DVD information should be appearing on screen right about here. Take your time. Okay, without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? Let's start stretching. 99, 100. <clears throat> this next one I picked up in South Beach goes a little something like this. All right, very good. Oh, excuse me if I oh. could. If we could just I'm talk sorry. about uh, something a little bit more informative for a bit. Mm. I was thinking perhaps uh, the two most basic and interesting facts of the Bushido Code. Oh, right, right. Slicing people in half. Getting lots of hard women. Uh, no, actually, it's uh, loyalty to one's lord and the duty of vengeance. Right. Vengeance. The vengeance I can get into. Throughout the ages, loyalty to one's master stands out as an unwavering principle of Bushido. This is quite understandable, given that samurai society at the time was based upon a feudal system. So trust between a samurai and his lord was quite vital. There's an interesting story where the samurai Mutata agreed to guard his master's castle as the master made an escape. As, a, as his, the enemy forces laid siege to the castle, Mutata wrote a letter to his son. For 
for myself, I am resolved to make a stand within the castle, and to die a quick death. It would not take much trouble to break through a part of their numbers and escape, <laughs> but that is not the true meaning of being a warrior, and it would be difficult to account as loyalty. It goes without saying that to sacrifice one's life for the sake of his master is an unchanging principle. When I was thirteen and Lord, I... I, uh, I, I can't pronounce that. He was seven. Uh, I came before his presence for the first time. And the blessings I have received since must not be forgotten for all the generations to come. Closely related to the principle of loyalty to one's master was the necessity to avenge his death if he had been murdered or died through treachery. Samurai vengeance is the theme of one of the most famous stories in Japanese history, that of the 47 Ronin. The samurai were Ronin because their master was deceased or banished. They decided to take vengeance on the master's death against the person who had wronged them, another lord. They snuck into his house at night and killed him. After completing their duty of vengeance for their master, they, ritual they ritualistically disemboweled themselves, a common practice called seppuku. Well, that's all we have for this evening. A very reluctant thanks to TV's Thomas Selleck for stopping by. Um, stay tuned for when meerkats attack next on Nova. Growing and learning and learning in piles with Dr. Simon Woodstock Giles.